Guten Tag. I've said before that interpreting numbers is a matter of context. In fact, sometimes when we see numbers, they represent something that is not a numerical value. In this video, we will lay the foundation for interpreting ones and zeros as logic. A quick recap on this slide. The term binary simply means composed of two things. Our standard is that those two things are the bits, zero and one. Depending on the context, we can interpret zero or one in different senses. Sometimes they carry a numerical weight. Other times they mean a concept such as low or high, false or true, no or yes, off or on. For this video, our primary goal is to interpret logic, which means that false and true are the main concepts here. We use logic all the time in our daily lives. It'd be difficult to make decisions without it. Because of this, logic statements are built into our conversations. Let's look at an example of simple logic statements written in English and then translated into a more direct equation. So, in words, we have this situation. Cody asks Tabitha for a date. Tabitha replies, I will date you if you are tall and have red hair. The reality is that Cody has red hair but is not tall. One of Tabitha's conditions was met, but not the other. As a result, Cody does not get a date. We can represent this in an equation. First, we must condense the various conditions into symbols. Arbitrarily, we let the variable a represent whether or not Cody has the desired height. One here would represent true, or the idea that the desired height is met. We do a similar thing for the other input condition, hair color, and the output condition, whether Cody gets a date. This may seem like a simple step, but it is critical to define clearly what each symbol means. Otherwise, they are just letters on a page. Now let's build an equation. Simply take Tabitha's original statement and break it into components that we have symbols for. I will date you becomes X if becomes this equal sign. You are tall is condition A. Let's leave and as a word for now. Finally, have red hair is condition B. Not surprisingly, there is an algebraic symbol used to represent the and operation. It is the middle dot. That is the only change in this line. Now we substitute in the known values for the input variables. Is the desired height met? No, that is false. Is the desired hair color met? Yes, that is true. Even shorter, we can write a zero for false and a one for true. As a last step, we apply the AND logic operation to find that x equals zero. In other words, this means false, Cody does not get a date. Let's look at a similar but happier situation featuring OR logic. Cody asks out Susie. Susie replies, I will date you if you are tall or have red hair. Now by simply meeting at least one of the input conditions, the result will be true and Cody gets a date. Again, we can put this in equation form. First, we define the variables. Then we replace the sentence with the corresponding algebraic symbols. Here we see that the notation for the OR operation is a plus sign. Now we substitute in the given values. Lastly, applying the OR operation shows a result of 1. Be sure to bring flowers, Cody. The three basic logic operations are AND, OR, and NOT. As we have seen, AND logic follows the rule that the output is high if and only if all of the inputs are high. Note that when I say high, you could replace with true or 1. OR logic follows the rule that the output is high if at least one input is high. NOT follows the simple rule of complementing the input logic value. So if you NOT a false, you get a true. If you NOT a true, you get a false. Note that the NOT operation can only accept one input, while AND and OR operations can have any number of inputs, two or greater. The algebraic symbols for each operation are shown here. AND is represented with a middle dot. 
or with a plus sign, and not has two possibilities. Traditionally, it is indicated with an overbar. However, that is inconvenient to type, so most often nowadays you'll see an apostrophe, or single quote, or prime symbol. This table up top is a truth table. It summarizes each of these operations by showing what the output would be for any combination of inputs. Notice that the x.y, or AND column, only is a 1 when both of the inputs are 1. If any of the inputs are 0, then the AND result is 0. The x plus y, or OR column, is a 1 when at least one of the inputs is a 1. The only time this shows a 0 is when all of the inputs are 0. Finally, the NOT operation. Notice that it is not a function of y. It only depends on x. Each time x equals 0, then x prime equals 1. Each time x equals 1, then x prime equals 0. It is very tempting to look at the middle dot and the plus signs and think that logic operations are the same as arithmetic operations. They are not. Oftentimes, the results you get in either interpretation look to be the same. But remember, one system represents trues and falses, while the other represents numerical values. Here's an example of where that distinction rears its head. In logic, 1 or 1 equals 1. Notice how I was careful to say OR as the operation. But in arithmetic, 1 plus 1 equals 2. This 1, 0 is how we write 2 in binary. Let's examine this logic statement. If it's raining or the sprinklers are on, then the ground is wet. In a situation where it is both raining and the sprinklers are on, then the ground is still just wet. The output is simply true. There is no such thing as extra true. An arithmetic situation using the same notation would be where we start with one apple and then add one more apple. Here, each one represents a numerical value, so we add them together to obtain two. I can't reiterate this enough. Context is critical. Ones and zeros can mean whatever we want them to mean. Establish your system before trying to do any work in it.